<laughs> you should say that on stage. <laughs> What's happening, you savages? It's Tuesday, the 26th of March. The check in is brought to you by the best blue chew. If you want to wow your partner in bed, you don't need a cape, you need blue chew. You're saying, Joey, what's Blue Chew? It's an online service that sends ED medicine right to your door at a fraction of the cost of what the other guys are charging. Have you gone to the doctor for Cialis, one of those? Oh, my God. You're going to go broke. Forget about it. But this, with Blue Chew, they got the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. You know you're getting good quality. Listen, you know me. I'm an old geezer, 61. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't control my emotions anymore. But I pop a blue chew, and I know exactly what's cracking. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 61, guys. I'm still here. You pop one of those. You carry them in your wallet. You see a victim. Boom! There you go. You're jumping up and down. Everybody likes the color blue. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about blue chew is everything is done online. So you don't have to step foot in a doctor's office or a pharmacy and pay those ridiculous prices. This is a lot easier. Just meet with one of our licensed medical providers, and you'll get the prescription within a few days. By the weekend, forget about it. It's unbelievable. Now listen, Blue Chew wants you to have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it, Jack. And Uncle Joey in the check-in got a special offer for our listeners. You ready for this? I'm going to send you Blue Chew for free. It's April. You know what I'm talking about? It's time for you to spread your wings like a butterfly. You're saying, Joey, free. Free! When you push in promo code Joey at checkout. Just pay the small fin. $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code Joey to receive your first month for free. That's how I'm starting off on a beautiful Tuesday morning. So do me a favor. Visit BlueChew.com for more details. Don't forget to enter pro, promo code Joey. And we want to thank BlueChew for always having our back and sponsoring the podcast and for helping us be better savages. Without further ado, let's get this party started on a Tuesday morning. Turn off your TVs, run for your lives. It's over. They didn't put you on this planet just to give up. If Uncle Joey could do it, I can rule the world. That's what you gotta be thinking. Welcome back to Chip, chip, Charlie, ho there. <laughs> how you doing? And hello. I'm doing great. Hello from Nashville. Yeah, look at you. How was your weekend? Fucking, it was amazing. It was great. It started, didn't start off great. Thursday was a little bit rough. It wasn't as rough as Connecticut, but it, it wasn't great. And I called you and you just gave me, your advice is usually to get high, but you're like, listen, I need you to have fun. And so, like, Friday, I, like, re re rewrote my entire set, and I got high because I haven't been getting high before I got on stage. And Friday and Saturday were almost all amazing sets. I, I tried a new joke on Saturday, and it kind of derailed the momentum a little bit, but I was doing – I had, a, a, like, four really good shows. You know, I've, I've found out recently again that the two most important sayings when you're doing stand-up or anything, acting, playing the drums, is, you know, <clears throat> I forgot. Anyway, the, the is two. Is have fun. It's one is that, you know, when we forget. We forget. So that's why with you, I'm trying to build a muscle of fun. You know, when I started this, I was obviously – you know, 28 years old. And I didn't really get a bite into this till I was about 31 or 32. 
And here I am on the ground floor of stand-up comedy, and my friends are getting married, and they're going on vacations to Acapulco and shit. So <laughs> I want you to think of all these things. Your mind puts extra pressure on you now, you know? And I look back now, and I'm like, when I did those showcases, like Josh brings you to a club. He mm -hmm. brings you now. You have a push in there. And it's a lot easier than you showing up on a Saturday with your nose wide open trying to do a guest spot. So you're like me. You want to do well. Right. And you put we put this unnecessary pressure on ourselves. When we do stand-up or anything, to playing a band, and we forget to have fun. Number two, before I forget again, did I tell you that I watched that fucking thing? With uh, the night that they made that stupid We Are the World. Did we talk about that last week? I, I don't think so. Okay, there's a show on Netflix in 1984. A lot of you guys are too young for this. All these musicians got together and did We Are the World. We Are the Future. Right? A bunch of fucking, like, whoever was hot in 84. Right. But it was all these old, you know, these young geezers, you know, fucking... Uh, <laughs> You know, Bruce Springsteen was young in 84. He had the best album of the year. You know, Cindy Lauper had a great album in 84. Michael Jackson had a great album in 84. Huey Lewis and the News had a great album in 84. All these people were there, plus a bunch of legendary guys like Ray Charles and Waylon Jennings and Bob Dylan. And you could see from the beginning, Bob Dylan wasn't comfortable. That's not his shit. He don't like being in a room with 30 people with egos. You know, everybody had an ego. Right. Not along. When you watch it, it's very interesting. <clears throat> but at the end, Bob Dylan is having a hard time. People, and then people who don't know art are like, he he was something, something was wrong with him. No, he was a fish out of water and... He didn't know. He forgot rule number one. We forget it at every age. And that's why I'm going to keep pounding it. When I write my comedy book, I got it in there. Keep pounding this. It's to be yourself. They did. He thought he went in there and he heard all these people singing. And he goes, <laughs> you no, know, I can't sing like none of these motherfuckers. You know, Bob Dylan has a very unique voice. When he, when he sings, you're like, that's Bob Dylan. <laughs> nobody could do Bob Dylan nobody could there, there's no Bob Dylan impersonators with the fucking harmonica and shit but this is the beauty of it Stevie Wonder is a great what do you when you I could talk like you a mimic yeah a, like a mimic I, I don't know these words impersonator or something like that impersonator kind of, like he had to sit Bob Dylan down and sing the song how they wanted him to sing it. And all of a sudden, he went up there, and it was fucking Bob Dylan. And you're like, what the fuck took so long? I'll tell you what took so long. He forgot rule number one, to be yourself. Wow. And it's, it's crazy and it's, that Bob Dylan can forget it. Everybody forgets it. Everybody fucking forgets it until you go, oh, shit. When you're on a movie set, and, and you go in there, and the guy's like, Lee, I got a movie part for you. Give me give me about two months. Then he'll call you a week before. He goes, Lee, it's three lines. It's three lines, and, you know, you got this. You know, you're going to put so much pressure on you. I don't even know what I was going to tell you. You're going to put so much pressure on yourself. <laughs> There's a great story about Caddyshack. Okay. It brought Rodney Dangerfield down, and this all goes in the same Kind of. And it was, it was his first fucking movie thing, you know. And he went out there and busted Rodney, but nobody laughed. And all really? of a sudden, he's like, cut. And then he's like, nobody laughed. He goes, Rodney, we're shooting a fucking movie. We can't laugh. And then the people, <laughs> then the people busted out, you know. But what I'm trying to say to you is, you're going to go in there and you're going to think about somebody. I don't know why this happens. It happens to me. When I read lines, when I get an audition and I read the lines, right away I know who they're looking for. Interesting. In my mind, I go, if I had the money, this is who I would get. 
So I think psychologically that tells me I got to act like this fucking Janook. Oh, shit. Okay, so, you know, you forget about this shit. So when you're there on the set, and they're making you fucking do it over and do it over. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm saying the lines right. They didn't want you to say the lines. They could hire a dummy to say the lines. They could hire a special Olympian to say the lines. They don't need that. They want the way Lee would say it. Hey, give me the gun. Right. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And it's, I get, I, I, when you were telling me to like have fun, I got high and I watched um, Paper Tiger, one of Bill Burr's. I think it was like two specials ago. And it, it just, I think he, to me, was a good example of like specials I could watch where you could see like it's just him almost having a conversation. Like it just seems like the way he talks. And it, it just, it's cool. It, was, it, it really helped. It really helped me like relax and like change. Like if That's I had not, bombed this weekend, I, I might have quit. Knock it the fuck off. And what helped you was smoking that reefer because you got a juice screw up your ass. That is so <laughs> I've fucking been telling you and all the other young comedians that you have to break away that character. We want you to revisit it. The other night I went to do The Verve with my man okay. Danny Braff. Now, I've spoken about Danny Braff on here before. I love Danny Braff. He's funny on stage. I like Danny Brav's personality and how he, I don't know, he's just a character. So I went up there. I had some fucking yoki. The food was great. Ooh. I go up in front of Rich Voss. I did about 12 minutes. I didn't do it too good because I wasn't prepared. I didn't look at wow. my notes. I just got in the car and I forgot to look at my notes. And it's so funny that when we were leaving, he goes, come on, let's take a picture. And I go, come on, let's do it in this hallway. And he goes, hold on. We have to get the light going. And I go, you're so, <laughs> you know, you're so Jewish. That's what I love about you. You know, there's times <sighs> you want your Jewiness. Right. You want that for the role. You know, when you, when you watch early Woody Allen, fucking, you know, before the Chinese chick, like early Woody <laughs> Allen, you know, y you fall in love with him. And at points and at times he does annoy you. You're like, what the fuck's he doing? Like when he when he had the hot chick and he had the cocaine and she gave him the straw and he and he sneezed. And <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he sucks you so much into that scene with his Jewish vulnerability. Right? Like he sucks you into that scene that when he fucking sneezes, <laughs> he pissed off because in your mind, you're gonna get your dick sucked. You're, you're jealous. You've never done cocaine before, but for right. this time, if it makes you get your dick sucked, you're gonna start a line to impress this girl, Hell and it's yeah. fucking hysterical. Some people don't look at it that way. You know me, dog. I'm a nerd when I look at those things. That's how you learn. That's how you fucking learn. But what, like, do you think, like, at the beginning, Woody Allen had to like take that away from him to like get like get confident or like what do you do you, do you have to like be Woody, Allen to put... need, Woody Allen didn't even know he had it wow okay nobody knows they have that but back to you know they want you they want you they they listen it's tough to bomb when you're you it's very so. tough to bomb when you're you because you're being honest very tough to bomb when you're you. When I go on stage and I write a joke and I think it's a good joke, I do good with the joke. But when I'm on stage and I throw that joke up and I'm high and the THC gets my mind and all of a sudden I start throwing those little bombs after a joke, that's you. Right. That's who they want to fucking hear. That's why I don't like L.A. for early comedy. I don't like L.A. for early comedy because they take your mind to talk about a TV show. I don't want you to talk about your TV show. I want you to tell me about fucking what makes Lee tick. And what's going to get that out of you is you being in bad pressure situations. 
pieces. Well, what your mind you says, listen, I'm abandoning this material. I'm done with this uh, shit. This sucks. I'm at the seven. <laughs> I'm at the seven minute mark. I'm not getting nowhere. Right. And I got another thirteen left. You know, after three more minutes of this, I'm expecting a tomato to fly. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump this fucking material. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. start by singing a song. You people like songs. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You're bombing already. Right. You're bombing. You might as well work on your singing your next career. And for you that, sang on stage? All the fucking time when I was bailing. <laughs> I would rap on stage to Dow. How you like me now? I'm in the mix. <laughs> you know, just to get, you have to throw everything out there. It's so fucking crazy. When you're bombing and you're looking at these jamokes and you made a mistake by booking this room, you didn't know, <laughs> you didn't know that it was 60 people that never fucked. They never, 69 oh. or nothing like that. They're just going through life fucking staring at each other, telling each other they love him. He's never pulled the hair. He's never lit a feet on fire. You know, he's never done anything to her. She's <laughs> never kicked his asshole with a feather. And you have those people. It's tough to take them on an imaginary fucking ride because they got no imagination. Right. <clears throat> you know, they've never gone home and go, honey, we're going to try something different tonight. I'm going to put a bottle rocket up your pussy and see <laughs> how you fly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. I, I love doing that. Holy shit. Do you 69? What do you mean? Have you ever 69? No, no, I've never done. Are you fucking crazy? That's my main game thrower. That's 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 you right there. Yeah, you flip them up. <laughs> Are you on top or the bottom? I'm on the bottom. I'm the king of swing. You pick up the legs and you spill them around and you wish it lands on black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't that's know. Oh my. Yeah, that's I, a great position. I, I never really. I tried to go on top once and she pushed me off. Oh, sure. You me you oh, yeah. 40 pounds of hummus balls on a face. <laughs> you can't take that. They got to start sucking the helmet and then the ball's laying there. If you throw it upside down, now they got a little Jew dick and some hummus nuts coming at you. Not too many people uh, can handle that leak. No, I can't. So you I got to oh. the bottoms. Like me, I got those lung nuts. I got on top. You're dying. I, I'm dying. I'm <laughs> not going one in an hour. All I hear, <laughs> you know. I'm not going anywhere. Do you, how long do you have? Do they fall into the water? I, what's with these personal questions today, Lisa? I don't know. Did you have a 69? I, do they fall in the water? No, they don't yeah, fall wanted, in the water. It's just what people want to know. You shit in the lake. <laughs> Off the rock. <laughs> Nothing hits my nutsack. All right. <sighs> what is wrong with you today? Asking perverted questions. You've been in that condo too long, cocksucker. Oh, gee, yeah. I have oh my god. I um uh, I have to do more mushrooms next time though. I you haven't do more everything. You live like a fucking monk during the week. <laughs> but I'm driving to what who gives a fuck? Eat put 60 listen. You might have to come down here this summer for a week because I got a new idea <laughs> for a fucking show that's gonna listen. Six episodes on YouTube. Right. We're gonna get an offer. But from who? Like a rehab place? No, what fucking rehab? Who's going to a rehab? I don't know. It's me, apparently. No, that was three years ago when the guy still worked at the rehab. He ended up going to jail for insurance fraud. He's doing six to ten in Florida now. What? Oh, I forgot about that. You told me you were going to send me to rehab and give me twenty grand. Yeah, that's what they do. They they take so, the insurance money, they give you a little kickback, then they put your brother's name on them, your sister. <laughs> Mom and the whole family goes to rehab. You got a hundred grand. Everybody gets a new start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but now he's in jail. That's okay. So, what, did, so what? what are we gonna do for this show? What this? I like. What am I? What am I being? This show is so fucking powerful. I can't even send it over the airwaves. Okay. Because there's only I, oh. four or five people that can pull this off and look at themselves straight in the fucking face. You know, if I put this out there, I'm going to tell you who's going to steal it. Fucking that creepy marijuana fucking channel. Vice, 
with their fucking crumpets and, you know, deep mm-hmm. bacon and shit. What the fuck? And then they got the weakest people smoking pot. Like, they got people who got no testosterone. They're smoking 18, you know, 18% THC. Talking about, you know. I think Vice saw, closed. They saw a mosque or some shit. Nah, I just, the other night I was going through it, and Vice was on TV. They still got the channel. I mean, oh, okay. Nobody, they didn't do nothing. They were kind of taking chances, and they fucking folded. And then they put a bunch of good she- shows on, but with the wrong fucking people. You know, these fucking right. little testosterone, no, no testosterone kids. You know, they eat Uber Eats and shit like that. They don't leave the house. They got no sunlight. <laughs> and they think they're dropping knowledge about Mount Fuji or whatever the fuck they're talking about now. It sounds like <laughs> you're describing me, to be honest. Not really. You're a different type of animal. You're out there doing things. These people ain't oh, yeah. doing things. Somebody's paying for their fucking college tuition, and all of a sudden they're fucking Confucius. And now <laughs> I'm on a fucking TV show to talk to the consumer about weed and you know, and the shows are god awful. I try. Listen, I tried my hardest. My agents didn't even want to go in there because they're like, "It's no money, Joey." I go, "I don't care. I have to prove a point." That you got these fucking jamokes on there, fucking taking five milligrams, and this vapor pen is tremendous. Get these fucking jamokes off. You're not doing nothing for the marijuana marijuana industry. I'm sorry. Oh, about that's my fucking take for the day. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Speaking of take, and it, it, like it's kind of, I haven't watched it because I don't think I could. But you used to talk a lot about um, like child actors you'd see in L.A. Yes, sir. Did, did you hear what's going on with like that like Nickelodeon producer this week? I know something about a documentary. Yeah, like do you, of just him like like doing terrible. Like, did you see anything or like? No, I don't, I don't even know what a documentary is. Uh, not like, but I just meant like with like the with kid actors. Like, did you ever see people acting weird with them or like being like? You know, there was one situation where I was uh, a little concerned, and I'm not a crime stopper. But I actually knew the producer, like, outside the set. That's how I got the job. I'm okay. not going to do movies or anything. And I had done a few films with these guys. These aren't, like, <clears throat> release films. These are straight to DVD, Disney, fucking, uh, you know, a couple different channels. And I knew that going in. But it helped me get insurance and it helped my acting. Whatever. You know, you learn something. I ended up doing like five or six movies with them. But there were kids in these movies. Okay. And, I, and who I did not like on those movies. There was a teacher, a male teacher. Whoa. That they hired and he kept doing the movies with us. You know, he was with us in Colorado. He was with us in Northern California. He was with us in... I think Ohio, we shot. I just didn't, you know, something. And then somebody came to me one day and said, what is it with that guy? And I go, it's like he was wanted for pedophilia in another state. And he changed his name and he moved to California. And he became a teacher on the sets. And it was just very disturbing. So when the other person came to me and I know me, I'm a fucking idiot. But when this person who was very, you know, white, great person, family man, great wife, uh, she was an actress also. He said it and like, I took the producer's side and the producer was like, we've all noticed that. We run background checks and, but you know, I, I can't, I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to be involved in that stuff. And here's the funny thing: like they had that some producer, right? They had some dude that was in a jacuzzi with a kid and all that stuff. And, you know, guys, we came, we saw some creepy stuff out there. And throughout the years, 
you're going to see something in L.A., save it in your memory bank, and 12 years from now, Diddy gets caught in an orgy jumping up and down with a bunch of rappers, you know. But you heard something 15 years ago, and you were like, ah. That's, right. It's like when my mom used to go, Rock Hudson's a fag. I used to go, ah, stop. <laughs> Right. Stop. Don't say those things. And then one day, 15 years later, you hear about it, you're like, ah, those people weren't wrong. That's right. what you're about to see in the next couple of years. Fuck. I, I listen, I don't know what's going on out there. I know that I know that I was never a part of anything out there beside the comedy store. And when I did a movie or whatever, I always had a good time. But I never felt like I was always in the circle. And guess what? I didn't want to be. No. I was very I, fine by my book. It, se it seems like that could be like a bad thing now, like being in the circle. Like it seems like it leads to bad things with everything <clears throat> coming out. For me, acting and stand up was. I don't know. It was what I did. It wasn't my lifestyle. I didn't enjoy going to Hollywood parties. I didn't enjoy any of that stuff. The last season premiere I went to was I'm Dying Up Here. Okay. That's so I did for Showtime. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking out of there going, this is it. Not because they were bad people. In fact, I had a great time at that party. The food was great. There were some other comics there. Bobby Lee, I was giggling. It was just a, that, that that wasn't my circle. That was never my circle. And I knew it. I knew it maybe after the fifth time I worked. They were nice. I got along with them, but that's where it stopped. On the longest yard, I was part of a couple clicks. We had to be. It was 17 weeks. Right. But there were some clicks I looked at and go, hey, good to see you guys. See you on. Tomorrow morning on the set. That's it. Like when you, and I know, I, I know you're in Jersey now, and it, but like if Mercy wanted to get into acting, would you let her? Like, did anyone ever approach you with Mercy? Absolutely. Absolutely. From the time she was born, maybe three weeks later, somebody had set up an account for her already at an agency. How was that for commercials? Wow. Like, like She's a little girl. I don't want nobody touching her. Are you right. kidding me? No. She talks shit from time to time to me about acting and, you know, she's in the school band, but I don't, I'm not promoting it here in this house. Not right now. No. Not right now. Number one, I'm not driving her all over the fucking place for auditions. <laughs> I don't want to go to auditions. That doesn't mean I want to drive her to a fucking audition and double park and send her upstairs and she's got to go in a creepy room. Not right now. Not right now. But this is me. There's a lot of people that it's really funny how people who, don't, who didn't do well, and I'm not saying everybody, but when you get to LA, the people that are pushing their children wanted to be actors, but it never fell through for them. So now they're pushing their kid. You know, I, I didn't want that. I, bro, I, I was a kid. You were a kid. When you get older, you start looking at your kids and going, this is what didn't work for me, whatever. I just wanted to have fun. That's it. I just wanted to giggle, win some games, lose some games, fuck up in some games, hit a home run in one game. You know, people cheer for her. Like I saw two years ago, the first time she hit, like, scored. And yeah. with such bass, everybody clapped. And she was like, what the fuck is that? I got to keep doing that if I want people to clap. You see it. You learn it, you know? Hell yeah. So all that's been very impressive, my brother. So where you headed? You headed to fucking Viva Las Vegas next week. I'm in Vegas all week. I'm so at eight o'clock every night. At? Where are you doing shows at Tarzan? Eight eight, eight o'clock every night at the Stratosphere, and then I have some other shows. I'm probably going to jump in on Brett Ernst. He has shows Tuesday and Wednesday at the Stratosphere, 
and then we'll see what else happens. But I'm at the strat every night. I can't, I can't, I, like I've heard for years about comics doing a full week, and this is my first one, and I, I can't fucking wait. I, uh, but I am, I, I've heard, like, am I going to get, and, and I, I know you don't know, but like you, I remember you telling, talking about like the employee buffet or something. Are you working at the stratosphere? They're paying you for the week? Yeah. And they're putting you up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get a little employee card. You go downstairs. You have a good time. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're like it has a, it had a bite mark in it. You'll see little fucking hair in your food and bite marks. You know, your fish will have, like, the skin will be pulled off it. With the <laughs> pulling the skin off up in the tea if it was crispy enough. And they're like, okay, we don't want that now. You'll see all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You'll see soup with, like, a uh, those wrappers from the crackers in there. Oh, God. So I, I don't think they have listen, buffets anymore. Listen, go, have a good time, eat shit, walk around, you know, learn. This is, this is, you're doing comedy for tourists. Right. And they come in every night, and it's a different, one night you're going to get a busload of Chinese people. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. You're up there fucking singing Chinese songs and shit. You're up there lip syncing fucking, you know. I, I used to love that Chinese song. You would sing like, Yadi. Dun, dun, you, know. Know. <laughs> you know how many times I was bombing at the store in the original room and I would sing that fucking song and it would bring me back? Because I did not give a fuck. I would just start belting it out. I wouldn't even look at the audience. I would look up and go, whatever happens, happens. And, and like, I can't actually, here's a question for you. Cause like the comedy store is kind of tourists, right? Don't you think like, I mean, there are different yeah, art like people there, but more like, listen, when I first got there, it was locals. Who the fuck was going to fly to California to right. go to the comedy store after 2015, it was, it became like Disneyland on Sunday. I got a text message from somebody yesterday that wasn't fucking, uh, Drinking down the block from the comedy store, and they go, "Oh shit, you're home, your old home." Yeah, and That's I was great. like, "Wow," you know. So yeah, now it's more of uh, when Bill Burr and a bunch of us were there. A lot of people, I, I would talk to them every Tuesday night, and they would tell me what it, it was a comedy vacation. Oh, for people, yeah, to come and they, they would stay at that hotel. I would appreciate that so much because no, 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 no. Tuesday, they were flying from, let's say, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, they were going to the store. Wednesday, they were going to the improv. And then Thursday, they were going to, like, a baseball game in Angel Stadium because Friday, they were going to see somebody at the Brea Improv. Like, I'll go, you flew in from Chicago, and they're like, yeah, we've heard about the Brea Improv, and you know, or they would go to San Diego to watch a comic. It was pretty impressive. These people were mixing, like, comedy at night with sightseeing in the morning, you know, like, different places, whatever. And as a comic, you want to hear that. It does something to you. Like, yeah. they, they were like, we wouldn't have come to California. We weren't going to come by the comedy store, and we were going to go catch, uh, you know, Sarah Silverman at Largo. That's big. They're coming out there to support, you know. So there was a time, the last two years of the store, <clears throat> I say that the comedy store was like Conor McGregor. You know, when Conor McGregor goes to Vegas, everybody jumps up and down. Everybody right. gets a dollar in their pocket. He generates that much income. There was a time, man, with the store, like people were going to the Japanese place to eat next door, which is, you know, $200 a plate in there. You ain't going in there fucking with no coupon. There ain't no happy hour. <laughs> whatever the fucking name of it is, Tanaka, whatever. I forget what it was. I mean, it right might next to the store, right? Right next to the store. You don't even know it's a sushi restaurant. It's fucking, there's not a sign. There's nothing. You walk up this, it's like you, you're walking into somebody's house. And then the house is the fucking sushi restaurant. Shit, I never went in there. It in looks like a castle years. almost. Yeah. So, in 23 years, I was there twice. 
and it was with my brother because he was picking up the check. I don't know nothing about that. They wanted fifteen dollars for just one steak on a stick. Fuck that. Just one, but it was the best fucking Japanese steak you ever had in your life. And he wasn't watching, so I kept ordering more. Let me get two more. <laughs> two, 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 two more, two, two more, two more, two more. Don't worry, you know. Don't worry. Eat them in one bite. I kept ordering two more and him another drink. Hey, get another two drinks. You and the bro. Yeah. <laughs> this is fucking 2000. Last time I was in there, Lee, it had to be 2005, six. Wow. And sometimes if you were pulling up to the store, you could see people sneaking up there. It was well hidden. Fucking forgot the name, but Tanaka, one of those fucking names. Katana. Katana. I, maybe, yeah, I, I I walked by it a million times. Katana. That's, uh, I never went there. That's fucking, are you, because you're not, I know you're not, you're not a cheap person, but there was a someone at the show last night who was going to change their plane ticket for like 600 bucks. And I was like, I would never, there's not a situation that I would spend six hundred dollars to like get a couple more hours of sleep. Do like, are you, are you past that, or like, would you spend like the money on like fancy? So you don't seem like a fancy sushi or like a club, like anything like that sort of person. Listen, we all want to be fucking hunky dory, right? Right. And I've said this before that I was left in a different situation with most people. I was left in a situation where my mother didn't leave a will. And she left the house, she left gold, she left money, and I got that shit yanked from me. I never saw a dime of it, you know. When I spend money now, I think about my daughter. This ain't my money. This is her money. Who the fuck am I to go get an $82 piece of sushi because I think I'm Johnny Bananas? <laughs> Are you with me? Like, I love right. lots of tails. I love fucking a good steak, you know. I love all these things, but yeah, at what point? Really? I'm going to push my flight back to save 600 What if you get to the airport and that flight you were on got delayed for eight hours and you just uh, dropped 600 on the earlier flight? It's, 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 listen, if you have that type of money, God bless you. Yeah, I know right. if I had that type of money, I wouldn't be on a commercial flight, motherfucker. Uh, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'd be hitching on a flight with fucking Guns N' Roses or something like that. Fuck it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you just switching six hundred bucks. What was he staying for? No, no, no. He was leaving. He was leaving. Like he just didn't want to wake up for the five a.m. flight. There was like an eight a.m. flight, and I was like, I tried to talk him out of it because the Jew and me, like with Josh and Jacob, they smoke. And for a set, like a month ago, Jacob was like, "Oh, let's just smoke in the rental car. We'll pay the." And I, I can't like the five hundred dollar fee to smoke in a. I would never. Like smoking a room, so I can't do that. I'm so fucking cheap. No, I don't smoke in my hotel room. You've never done that. I'll smoke if they have a balcony. I'll smoke okay. a balcony. You know, I don't care what kind of glass you got. A little bit always sneaks in. Yeah. You know, so a little bit. Oh, you have to sit out there for a couple minutes. And let it air out of your clothes and air out of everything. And then go inside. You know how many times I smoked a fucking bazooka on my balcony? My daughter's in the pool right there in Laguna Beach. My wife's in there with the neighbors. And I'm on the back. And I turn around. The fucking door's open this much. Oof. My wife comes up and goes, this room smells like fucking reefer. The worst thing. Listen, I never stole a car in my life. And I'll tell you why. Right. Because when you get pulled over, you got nowhere to go. You're in the right. car. You got the evidence on you, you fucking dummy. And number <laughs> two, if you smoke in a hotel room again, cops knock on your door. You got nowhere to go. What are you going to jump off the fucking balcony? If the security comes up to your room and says, you know, Mr. Syat, we've been smelling weed. We got a couple complaints. And there you are with a joint in your room. So listen, you've been in hotels with me. What's the rule? We check in, we go right. upstairs. And the time it takes me to pee, call my wife and roll a joint. I come right back downstairs. Do we not? 
Right? Oh, always. Always. I mean, go smoke a joint and see what the fuck's going on. I would never tell you to come to my room and smoke a joint. Not even when I did Vegas and I had the big room upstairs. We didn't smoke in yeah. that room. Privileges, bro, when you're a comic, you know, privileges are privileges. And in life, privileges are privileges. I love smoking weed. But you'll never see me driving smoking a fucking joint. No. Very seldom. We used to go to the ice house and smoke a joint outside the ice house. But you could name in 10 years, how many times are we driving down the 101 acting like Cheech and Chung? Did we have 2,000 milligrams in us? Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody asked. But were we driving Cheech and Chong in it? You know what I'm saying? No. I like I'm not like because where should I do you have any tips for like in on the strip where like where do I go to smoke? I don't want to get in trouble. Like, do they care? It's no where would you smoke? It's legalized in the city. They got weed okay. stores. They got weed stores in Vegas. I know they have, but I didn't know where I, if I could smoke right on the strip, like I by know. the hotel. You smoke whatever the fuck you want. When you get to the stratosphere, they'll tell you where to smoke. When you get downstairs okay. to do the show. Mm -hmm. Don't go, no, go out that door right there. Nobody will bother you. They have a smoking lounge, you know, even at Dodger Stadium. They just don't fucking tell you. Really? Yeah, you can smoke dope at dying. You got to walk 18 miles past the Mexicans <laughs> out there with the Yakuza or something, with Ichiro Suzuki's people, whatever that <laughs> the fucking guy is that got caught for gambling. Hold on, we'll Show talk him. about that. Huh? Go ahead. Shoni Itani. Yeah. Right, that's my boy. But now with this gambling thing, hold on one second while we talk to you savages about better help. All right. This episode is brought to you by better help. Let me ask you something. How do you recharge? Do you need a night out with your friends or do you like to spend time alone? I like to spend time alone. That's why I started going to better help. Listen, you got to build a better social life that doesn't drain you. We always pick up these spare flies. They come into our life. They want to ask us creepy questions. You know, listen, therapy can help you figure out what that looks like. All right. BetterHelp is amazing. Their trained therapists will work with you to help you set boundaries, learn positive coping skills, and become a kick ass version of yourself. You can talk to your therapist over a video call, a phone call, even a message, whatever works for you. Listen. We're living in some crazy times. And I don't know if you've gone out there to check the prices and see what's going on in the real world right now. If it's up to them, they'd rather you walk around not knowing what you're supposed to know. Better help change all that. It's All you need to do is take a quick, quick quiz. They'll match you with a licensed therapist. And if you don't like the therapist, they'll switch the therapist to a new one for free at any time. Listen, yeah, we all need to work on coping skills and that, that, that. Listen, we need to... Talk to somebody. You need to figure out what's going on, and BetterHelp is there to help you. So do your thing. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Diaz. Today, I'm going to get you 10% off your first month. I'm going to do something solid for you. And like I said in the beginning, listen, I like hanging out with myself. I got problems, too. Don't think you got problems because you like hanging out with yourself. But if you want to know why you want to hang out with yourself, Contact BetterHelp. They'll figure it out for you. And remember, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a shot with BetterHelp.com slash Diaz. Again, D-I-A-Z, and get on your way to being the best version of yourself. Guys, I was with them for months, and look at me now. I'm living like a doctor, tip-top magoo. So if you're walking around who butts, get a hold of BetterHelp. Don't forget. Code Diaz, D-I-A-Z. Thank you. And now back to the craziness. We're back, bitches. And don't forget, our little brother Lee Syatt used better help last week after he bombed. It was so. <laughs> and then when he found out the club was going out of business after he bombed, he double called them again. He was he had her on speed text. You know what I'm saying? He was over there sending smoke signals and shit. Can you believe that? I like I'm 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 half happy because now there's no evidence that it ha like that was there, but now I can't go back and like redeem myself. Lee, 
There's some places you just don't go back. No, I'll you never know? go back. You just don't. Listen, Lee, from 94 to 96 and 97, I was bombing all over. <laughs> You know, I was like Israel. I was just bombing. Bombing like fucking Israel. I mean, it was, you know, but it was a bunch of places. I was bombing comedy clubs. You know, there were two comedy clubs that gave me love in Denver all the time. And it was George McKelvey's comedy club in the comedy corner, which was a McKelvey club on the other side of the town. He always gave me guest sets. The manager, Hated me. Hated me. Why? I could see him on stage going like that. Like when I was on stage bombing, he would just shake his head. But the owner of the club and me were tight. He really liked me. He got me into the club in uh, Judy Brown's club when she was a manager down there before, you know, Bert's manager and stuff. She got He got me into that club. He had made some other clubs for me. George McKelvey was a well-known comic from Denver been on a Tonight Show. And when he started comedy, his comedy duo was with Steve Martin. Holy shit. Yeah. This guy was the real deal, George McKelvey. And it was like you meeting me. You coming in and going, Joey, when I get on stage, do I and he would just cut me off. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he would be like drinking a bottle. Here's one of those. You're going to go up there and you're going to give him 10 minutes. I want you to throw the kitchen sink at him. And then back off for a minute and then close it with that joke you do about eating a chick out. I mean, he was great with me. Like, he just guided me all those years. I didn't give him enough credit over the years, but I love George. But I remember, like, I would be bombing there on Saturdays because he would give me a guest set every other Saturday at a different club. So I did two at one club and two at the other club. This went on for about three months after I basically just gave up. I was like, I'm not going up there no more. What, what am I doing up there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time I go up there, people like him again. You know, I mean, you have to be honest with yourself after a while. It's not fucking working here. I was right. very New Yorkish. Or in my mind, it wasn't working. You know, these gigs that you're doing with Josh right now, that you're very mm-hmm. fortunate, Nashville and Virginia. Yeah. I was doing Wyoming. Think about yeah. walking to a barn with make-believe seats. 400 people with 200 with cowboy hats on. It smells like shit and pigs and fucking god-awful in there. And you get there, you're like, this is my career. <laughs> and I remember getting up on stage doing 15 minutes and just, it was a slow death. It was a slow death. And I remember the guy would give you a buck and a quarter your hotel's around the corner. Hotel. I don't want to wake up in the city at dawn. They're going to shoot me. <laughs> I would get the fuck out of there. You don't know. You know, Wyoming, Utah, fucking Montana. I bombed all over Montana. I'm surprised. Fucking, uh, what's that show from Montana that they do? A Yellowstone? Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't shot me on that fucking show for bombing all over Montana. You know, and that's it. Idaho, oh my God. The other day I was sitting there watching something with my wife. And they were talking about Idaho. And they went <laughs> Twin Falls, Idaho. And I remember looking at my wife within two minutes. And I go, not only did I bomb there, I got arrested there. You know what I'm saying? I got arrested oh. there two weeks in a row. The first time I went, because the, the clubs were across the street. It wasn't, listen. They weren't clubs. They were fucking, you know, <laughs> karaoke bars in Twin Falls, Idaho. And it was a street. And both streets had actually, you know, like barbecue and this, and steaks and uh, those bars with the bull. And they had another bar where you did the line dancing. So we, I, I, I don't know. I followed so many line dancing fucking classes and nights and ladies nights. And the one week, it was like on Tuesday night. I didn't look at my schedule. I never looked at the schedule. And the Tuesday night, the first week was Tuesday night. And I went up there. Henley, come on. 
I get into an argument with a heckler. But the reason I got into a, a, a reason I got into an argument with a heckler because I was bombing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he, he had to insult me. Like I, I'm up here wasting my time. And then I didn't know. I was bombing. They threw him out. We said some shit to each other. Well, the next that Sunday, I look at my schedule. I'm like, I'm back in Idaho next week. I got to drive to one show like in in Washington, but then I'm back in Idaho, right? I'm like, what the fuck? And I, by Tuesday, I realized I'm back in Twin Falls. Like, what the fuck? Where am I tonight? And it was the club across the street. I'm talking about Lee, uh, <clears throat> the comedy store in comparison to where they used to eat fucking sushi off the naked women on Sunset. Oh, Day. yeah. It's real close, like 80 yards from the store. That's how yeah. far it was. That's how far the, the other Wednesday night was, the Thursday night or whatever. Wherever I came from, and I, I, wherever I came in from, I got there early. So I okay. checked in the hotel room, and I go, let me go eat some Chinese food at the fucking mall. Let me go to the, no, let me go to the mall. Right. And I go to the mall and I'm at the food court and there's one of those Chinese joints. And I get the, you know, you're getting $75 a night, Lee. You're not getting the lobster Cantonese. You're going to get the fucking bowl with the noodles and you're getting them for everything for eight ninety nine. While you're eating the chicken, you know, it's not chicken, but fuck it. It is what it is. It could be a goat. It could be some kids fucking uh, turtle. <laughs> And the motherfuckers that I got the, the beef with walk up to me at the mall. Oh and no! Comedian from last week. What? Anyway, I hit him with the tray, and the Chinese food got stuck to his head, and I got arrested. The cops caught me running in the parking lot, and I got put oh. in jail till fucking the show started at nine oh one. The fucking Booker had to send bail money, and the other comic had to come pick me up. You know. I was bombing all over the fucking place, but that wasn't going to stop me. I knew that the more numbers that I did, I'd get to where I'd have to be. I didn't know it'd be 10 more million fucking spots. And I, I, I know you it's not something you recommend, but how good did it feel to hit him in the head with the tray? Tremendous. It was At that time, it was perfect. I was going through a divorce. I was broke. <laughs> I was shoplifting my way across country, and I was doing <laughs> And I had a fucking car with the axle was fucked up. And I had a radiator that blew up every 800 miles. <laughs> I had to fucking put that little metal stuff in the radiator and it would grip again. Come on, man. Those are the stories. You know, those are the best times of my life when I look at that shit. When you're driving a car like these people only, only use the spare tire for 50 miles. Motherfucker. I use that spare mouth through states. What? Plural. States. Ooh, who shot that oh. butt? States. You understand me? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my God. That's... Do you just shit yourself? Like, that sounded like not it as... Was, like that sounded a little... It wasn't a shit myself. It was a little gas that came out of my asshole, you know? It didn't sound like a little gas. I, was, I had a protein shake. Oh, I hate you. you. How do you keep drinking those things? Because I didn't have time to eat. I had a protein no, but that's shake with some raspberries. I put some raspberries with some coconut water, a couple ice cubes, and two scoops, seven points of protein, 45 grams just to get it in there and shit. But every time you drink those things, you fart nonstop. That's the beauty of it. I'm preparing myself to be in social settings. <laughs> I love it. Um, I wanted to ask you like a quick comedy question. Like, I when I changed up my set this week, I did a, like a two three minutes on Nashville, and I've seen like comics do that a lot, and I've never did it. Like, is that? Do you recommend writing something on like the city? Always. Okay. Always. Always. And I'll tell you why. It shows the audience that you made a commitment to find out about their city. When I was young and balls and, you know, I love getting to a city early, even yeah. though I had to sleep in my car. 
and then take a shower at a hotel until the hotel let me check in there for the comedy club. I did that a lot. I did that a lot. Just go to the hotel where you're going to stay and spend the night in the parking lot and get up, brush your teeth in the, in the little thing. Tell the clerk, I'm going to be in here in about an hour. So I'm going to go back to the bathroom and do my thing. And then you go out and you look at the day until two until you can check in. Trust me, it's a long day when you got to kill five hours and all you got to half a joint and 18 bucks, you know. But you find stuff. And then all you got to right. do, all you got to do is read a paper. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give you some inside stuff here. Okay. To some people. Okay. So now, once you've been to that town twice, you know, that's why I tell people. I, I didn't have the funds, Lee, when I was. But when you're a, a feature act and you have a normal upbringing and you have money in the bank, I know it's hard to tell a feature act that's making 300 or 400 for the week to go get a $50 steak. They'll look at me mm -hmm. and go, Joey, come on, man, I can't afford that. Do it. It's an investment. It's like buying a Facebook ad. You're going to go to that steakhouse. You're going to have the best steak. You're going to, you're going to tip the waiter. You're going to find out the waiter's name. And what would I used to do when I go on stage in half these places? I went to your restaurant today. Oh, uh, okay. The, I have my man Gary with the one earring in his fucking nose. <laughs> Everybody who goes to that restaurant has seen that guy with the one earring in his nose. And talk about it. Give your opinion on it. How many times were we in Austin together? Or anywhere in Texas? I always opened up with Katrina and the shrimp. <laughs> and, you know, the gumbo. I always talked about gumbo in any part of Texas. Louisiana. You know, you have to connect. You know, find out who's got the best Jew food in town. Let's go. Let's get an Uber right. down there. Now, when you go to that town, you can talk about pastrami. You can talk about this. When I go to Cleveland, I go get pastrami. So now when I'm fucking Ribbons, whatever the fucking name of that place is, now before I go to that town, I'm telling you, I'm excited to go there. That connects me with you. You're like fucking Joey. Sound the Rogan fucking podcast. That when he comes to Indianapolis, he's going to go to fucking Mortovan Burgers, whatever the fuck, you know. Michael Jackson Burgers. I don't fucking know. <laughs> right away, that lets you know that you appreciate that area. Right. Which I do. I wouldn't talk shit if I didn't appreciate your fucking area. So that appreciation, like I went to Nashville once, and it was the week the man got caught sucking somebody's dick in the cemetery. Something. Five, six years ago. That's and a thing? People were talking about it. And I'm watching this going, look at these nice white people. Uh, what's the word to say? Uh, they're coloring. Gossip? The no, they're not gossiping. Not at all. It was a current event, and they were just discussing it, but they were covering up blowjobs in the best way they could. They had sexual contact. They Everything they could spend. Uh, Do you follow what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Who knows what they were doing? Blah, 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 blah. You know, everybody knew what the fuck they were doing. Just say it. <clears throat> I don't know what they were doing, you know. <laughs> Boom. Fucking uh, go up there on stage and say what you think. Give your opinion on it. And in the middle of my act, at the 12 minute mark, when I don't need any help, I don't need any help. I don't need a fucking Nashville joke. Right. Doing good on my own. I threw it out there and I saw people fucking kicking tables over. That's wow. what it had just happened. It happened like Tuesday and I got there on Thursday. And all these things you talk about by going to the local diner, going to breakfast at a place, go over and drop the 10 bucks. You're going to hear shit. That's right. Gonna give you material. Why are you saving the 10 bucks? Because the hotel's going to give you that fucking those fucking eggs made by some chick with a missing finger. <laughs> you don't need that shit. Just drink the juice, get the free cup of coffee and go down the fucking road. 
steal a donut for later. Go down. And listen, I eat the hotel breakfast, but I also go out to breakfast one day. If I'm there for four days, how many days right. are you going to eat the hotel? How many days are you going to eat Cheerios? And that fucking dang, you know what I'm saying? You don't even <laughs> like Cheerios. Nobody likes Cheerios. I don't care if you got a half a heart, you won't eat fucking Cheerios. <laughs> how many days? I can just see you yelling at me at that. Like, how many days are you going to eat Cheerios? Like, how many fucking days are you going to eat this raisin bran that's two weeks old? How many fucking weeks? You got to do something. You got to loosen up. Let's go get some Wero's Rancheros or something. Something. A grapefruit. I don't give a fuck. Right. Okay. That's and would you would you try to change it up every time? Because you can't do the same joke the next year you go to the city, right? No, nah, but you went to a different restaurant. Okay. You went to a gay bar. You went to a bar. You went to a museum. You drove by a school. You know, these are all the things. That when you go into an area, you, you you know, you grab that energy, man. And I, I know you're looking at me going, what the fuck? This is Joey Diaz who fucking farts. And <clears throat> there was something about that. And then I remember going to these cities now as a feature act. Okay. And 600 bucks for six shows. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I already got an eight ball bought. <laughs> So that's I'm clearing 350. The plane ticket was a buck fifty to get down there. What am I clearing? I'm not clearing dick. Yeah. So what am I gonna do? You want me to pay my light bill with that last hundred? <laughs> Fuck the light bills. I gotta back up on candles. Fuck it. Go to a restaurant. Okay. Go to a nice lunch restaurant. You know, go they have a lunch special. Talk to people. Who where are you from? I'm from California. No shit. My my girlfriend from Hollywood. No, come on. Yeah, she used to work at the comedy store and she sucked dick in the valley. Oh, I know her. <laughs> you know, and next thing you know, you got some. You need weed while you're here? Fuck yeah. Oh, let me come to your show tonight. Boom. And you're learning about that area. I, I learned, listen, I learned so much about Houston. Beaumont, Texas, Dallas, Texas, El Paso, Texas, fucking Austin, Texas, you know, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, it was just so many of them. Places I would have never gone to if it wasn't for comedy. Cru Las Cruces, New Mexico. First time I ever went to New Mexico was for comedy. I thought I was going to get killed. You know, uh, fucking Arizona. I went to Arizona in 84, but the next time I went was to do comedy in Tempe, like, I don't know, 15 fucking years later, you know, and you just, you know, I had greasy Tonys in Arizona, the fat guy from Jersey who, who didn't sleep, who put speed in his Mountain Dew, you know, we had San Francisco, we had, it's just such a beauty to travel after a while as a comic. I and, love it. And to have your roots in that city, especially as a feature act, you have more freedom. It's not your week. It's got nothing to do with you. I'm just doing 25 minutes and I'm out of there. I'm not hanging out with this fucking stiff telling me about his agent and some movies reading for. I need this. He doesn't want <laughs> me. I'm right. not going to see what the city are. I mean, if the guy likes you and he goes, come out with us, Lee. Yeah, you go out with the headline. But if not, you're working a bitch from the minute you get to that club at 8 o'clock. You know, as soon as you get off the stage, you're hanging by the bathroom, making believe you're watching a comic, but you're waiting for broads to come out and go, oh, my God, you were so funny. Really? You want to swallow my sword? And <laughs> oh, good, good. You know, you're rocking and rolling. You're going back to the girl's house. She's got girlfriends. She's got a boat. This is part of being a comic. Right. You got to live. This was what my problem was before I left L.A. I wasn't living. I couldn't. Right. I, I could now I got four years of stories to tell. Right. I got, I got four years of shit to tell. I ran out of That's shit. How many times are you gonna hear the same fucking shit? But four years again, now nah, I'm a different person. I'm a di it's a different life. It's people wouldn't even believe the shit I see now. And what I, I see every day in front of me, I'm looking at a young girl growing up. I can't talk about that though. People look at me and go, Joe, yeah. The fuck? No. I disagree with that, but I think it's uh, 
I, I it, it's good to hear that like I'm do like I, I did the right thing. It's but like now Na- I didn't even know how cool Nashville was. This is like this is my second time here in a few months. It's like one of the coolest cities I've ever been to. And it's come up a long way, man. Oh, listen, I loved all those cities. I loved Cleveland. I fucking love Pittsburgh. I love Buffalo. I love fucking, you know that. I love all those smaller New York cities up north, mm-hmm. the Albanies, and you go there and you look, you know, and you go, what the fuck happened here? They, <laughs> they need comedy 24 hours up in this bitch. Yeah, Albany, Albany's a little, I haven't been to that funny bone yet, but the city's a little rough. I still remember taking like an overnight bus. And waking up in one of those towns. I don't know where it was. Albany, Syracuse. No, it wasn't Syracuse. Rochester. Rochester. And they had like an overnight. And it's like 7 in the morning. And I'm just, you know, trying to get. They they always sold like coffee. They always sold like the chicken soup in a cup. The bouillon for a quarter. You just, It's freezing in there. You're drinking bouillon and shit. Like the other pedophiles at the train station or the bus station or whatever the fuck it is. You're the only one without a scarf. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else got a scarf. And they're all sniffing seats and shit. And I remember one of those towns. I'm like, what the fuck is that thing? And I walk over. They had like a little restaurant in the bus station, like Amelia's. It was basically a fucking bar where like professional drunk people, like this is the last resort. This is it. Like, I asked people afterward, and people were like, oh, you don't want to go in there. This was a comedy club during the week at the bus station. Holy shit. They did two one-nighters there. Somebody booked two one-nighters at the fucking, I like to say it was Albany, but I don't know. This place was dingy. And then when I, I think I went there through, yes, because on the way back, I had to stop in Albany. And then I got the full scoop. They did comedy there two nights a week. The place sat like 24 people, but 20 of them were at the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like crumbled yeah. together. They hadn't gotten sun in 30 years. You know, they're in a fucking hood. And these were locals that hung out at the bus station. Fucking locals. That hung out at a bus. Did you end up doing a show? Not really. Not really. I got on that fucking Greyhound and tip, tip, tally all out of that bitch. I'm going to do a fucking... But when you land at the ferry in Weehawken, there's a sushi place. They do comedy there. Wow. That'd be nice. Yeah, they do comedy there one night. They've been doing it since I was coming back and forth. I've never, you know, I think one night I walked past them doing comedy. I was coming back to the city while I was shooting The Sopranos. I went over there to eat or something, and I fucking... uh, Saw them doing comedy one night. I'm like, not bad. Hey, it's like 22 people who just got off the fucking ferry that can't wait to get home to get a whiskey. They got to stop right now, motherfuckers. Holy shit. Thank God. That's that's fucked up. I love that. One of my open mics just closed. I'm bummed about it. It's like one of those local. I love local bars. Local. Little- it, uh, yeah. It's just fun. Yeah. There was an open mic here in Garwood. It's like 25 minutes from my house. I saw the pictures. It looked like fun. Then I read in the paper, somebody got stabbed there. Mark that off your list. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I go to I go to two two places where people got stabbed. Listen, but and do you do them for free or for money? Open mics. Oh no, you won't see me in there. If I get (laughs) 50, I'll take a chance. I'll go over and put a fucking dollar in the flower with a guy laid when they get stabbed him. Oh, yeah. They, they have candles outside of one. Yeah. It's Monday nights. I... <laughs> Holy shit. I love it. What how do you got fu- this week? Oh. How fucked up is it where they got candles for you? That's like the mm-hmm. people in Connecticut right now. If you go to that club, they got little candles with your name on it and a picture of you and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they lean out of space on the candle. Oh. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> I think one of the best things, you know, it took me a couple of years to figure out. I always, I still do. Like when I went up to 
Thursday night to the Verb with Danny and the other guy and, and Rich Voss. I, I had a blast, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I had a blast being high in the car, thinking about going up there and thinking about, you know, and it's really fun. Like I, I can, Josh and I were on the phone the other day and we were talking about how lucky we were. And this is why I thought back and, and I called you back and said those things to you about it's time for you to fucking put a anchor in Boston. Because with Denver, even though I was doing a lot of bars and shit, my anchor was the comedy works. When I lost the comedy works, there was other clubs, but I didn't want to work those clubs. So I had to make my decision right then and there. And the best decision I ever made was going to Seattle because we had two open mics, Monday and Tuesday, at the comedy club. And the beauty about it was that he worked with you. He didn't give you a lot of advice. He would say little things to you. And the first time I went in on Monday night, I was number one on the list. And I went in the next night, and I was number one. And I went in a week later, and I was still number one. And that's how life is. Nothing you can do about it. You got to work yourself out of that hole. And I would right. work myself. And I still remember being number six and going, far. look at Uncle Joey, number six and shit. Because I was listening to him. He would tell me, take that out, put that in. You were running with that. That's a great joke. Like that, I was on an open mic one day and I was talking about, you know, I went to this my friend's house in Miami. Mm-hmm. Like that. This was ninety. This is like ninety seven, right before I was gonna leave Seattle, and I pulled the lead, and I took a week in fucking Davie, Florida. Davie, Florida. Nobody even knows who Davie, Florida is. Well, I'll tell you, it's where the Dolphins practice. But oh. this is this is a comedy club in Daly, in Davie, Florida. It was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, six shows. No, fuck. It was like 10 shows. It was 400 bucks. And they put you on, though. But I didn't care. I wanted them to see me. I was ready for (laughs) For Davey. I was ready for Florida. You know what I'm saying? Why Florida? I have no fucking idea. So I went down there, and I ate a bag of dicks, and, you know, but it was 400 bucks. The plane ticket was 200. Yeah. The, the cab, they didn't pick you up. No. They didn't pick you up. And no, no. See, so at the condo, then you went to the condo, and there wasn't a key. And you didn't have enough money to fucking take another cab. So you got to walk to the comedy club in 90 degree weather to get uh. the key and then walk back to the club with your suitcase. And a leather jacket because you just flew in from fucking Alaska. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> fucking brutal, man. Yeah. So, but I, but I enjoyed the best thing I enjoyed was driving with when I got to Seattle Monday and Tuesday. We did the open mic and then we started mm-hmm. branching out. Tuesday night, there was a club that women danced in cages. And you went downstairs, and in the middle of that, the DJ turned the music off, and you got to do seven minutes. Sounds like a great show. Yeah, I knew I was going to bomb, but I didn't give a fuck. I also knew it was a set. Right. You know? I don't know. We did all this talking, and I forget what my fucking point is. Oh, why did he go to Davey? There was a story about Davey. Davey, like because he- I, was, I was a fucking idiot. Or I, I probably... Because I thought Davey was going to do something for me in the midst of everything. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. Not really, because that's how I met Jim Florentine. Really? That's when we met. Me and Jim Florentine met in Davey motherfucking Florida opening night, Wednesday night. And then I went to the other club to open up from the chick from night court. And Jimmy stayed in Davey opening up for somebody huge, too. That's crazy. <clears throat> That's fucking crazy. I and the, see, I, I'm in that place. Like, I would love to do, to do Davy right now. No, like I know Davy. No? There's no club in Davy no more. 
maybe like the Florida Gator uh, house and there's 80 people. You don't need that in your life right now. But it's really nuts how I worked myself in a great open mic system. And it was crazy because you had to do five minutes. You got a light at five. And you had to be off at six. Mm -hmm. And if you ran the light at six, you couldn't come back for a few weeks. Oh, I wish more mics did that. No, I did that from July to September, October. I never questioned it. And then something interesting happened in October. They asked me to do a Seattle comedy competition. Nice. And I said, yeah. And we were talking at the meeting, what, how many sets and it was you got five minutes the yellow light comes on you got a minute if that red light comes on you don't get action for the night and i saw so many people get disqualified who had great sets for going six minutes and three seconds guess who never went over me because of the training they gave us at the underground carl was mm -hmm. He was preparing us for that fucking contest. That's great. Yeah, but, it's a. And, and you so, so you, and you were telling me to put down roots. You think it's good to to like have a, a city. You gotta have a home. You gotta have somewhere to grow, somewhere where you're gonna walk in there as an MC, and you're gonna gauge your. This is the only way you can gauge yourself by walking out of there when he sits you down. And goes, Lee, I love you. <laughs> you did everything here. I can headline you twice a year, Christmas and the 4th of July. But it's time for you to go move on and go get some fucking credits. If not, you're going to end up like Dick, Tim, and Joe and credits. But, you know, you're the king of Boston. But, but you know, everybody thinks they can just pick up and move. Like, mm -hmm. I think in a year I'll move to Los Angeles. Listen. You don't want to go anywhere without a rocket attached to your back. What does that mean? You don't want to come off something. You always want to come off a win. You're not going to right. show up in LA because you just did. I just headlined the stand. No. <laughs> no. That's not the way it works. Go do something. Book a roll. Wait for the roll to come out. Now you got something to bounce on. You know, be a part of something. Now you got something to bounce on. People are always looking to bounce and nothing happened. If you're in Boston, Lee, you got picked to do the, well, no more. They went out of business, Montreal Comedy Festival. I know. So, like, and you get picked for that. That's how you move to L.A. or New York. Right. Now you got a manager. Now somebody's going to come up to you and go, Lee, where the fuck have you been all my life? I'm looking for the next Woody Allen. And you just walked into the room. You're fucking. <laughs> Okay, it's because uh, I, I, I is that what pulls Ali means is like just like be not not in a bad way but like not over anxious but like over eager like because when you said you pulled the leave and went to Davy like I'm the one who would be like oh let's let's move now it was like, no it was the dumbest move of my life because there was nothing there with it I wasn't accomplishing nothing I was just getting a feature spot in a B room why would I spend four hundred bucks. Why would I spend 200 bucks to get there? Nothing was going to happen in my career. I would have done better by doing 10 spots in town. Okay. Maybe doing a triple run or something. You know, there's no need for that right now. You're just going down there for air. Let's pretend you kill. Okay. What are we going to bring you back as? A feature. A feature for $400. Again, so now you're going to come back, but you're going to ask her, what else is there around here? Mm -hmm. and that's the positive thing but not really because now she's going to give you another lady who's going to pay you $400 and the only good thing about that is it's one plane ticket works for two right so you save there but where are you going to stay on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday the bus station it's always a fucking by the way cocksucker have a great week thank you buddy motherfucking uh, Vegas I'll be around this week. I'm going to surprise these cocksuckers. Oh, and fuck that's, yeah. That's that, baby. I'm ready to go. Tip top Magoo. It's going to be a good week. And guess what? Next what? week is April. 
ticking right along. <laughs> you can tell I'm high already because my eye is stuck. I got that little one little diabetic eye. It goes down. <laughs> 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 I love, I love you, you buddy. Stay black. The check-in is brought to you by the best, Blue Chew. If you want to wow your partner in bed, you don't need a cape. You need Blue Chew. You're saying, Joey, what's Blue Chew? It's an online service that sends ED medicine right to your door at a fraction of the cost of what the other guys are charging. Have you gone to the doctor for Cialis, one of those? Oh, my God. You're going to go broke. Forget about it. But this, with Blue Chew, they got the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. You know you're getting good quality. Listen, you know me. I'm an old geezer, 61. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't control my emotions anymore. But I pop a Blue Chew. And I know exactly what's cracking. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 61, guys. I'm still here. You pop one of those. You carry them in your wallet. You see a victim. Boom! There you go. You're jumping up and down. Everybody likes the color blue. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about Blue Chew is everything is done online. So you don't have to step foot in a doctor's office or a pharmacy and pay those ridiculous prices. This is a lot easier. Just meet with one of our licensed medical providers, and you'll get the prescription within a few days. By the weekend, forget about it. Ba -ba -ba -da 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 -da. It's unbelievable. Now, listen, Blue Chew wants you to have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it, Jack. And Uncle Joey in the check-in got a special offer for our listeners. You ready for this? I'm going to send you Blue Chew for free. It's April. You know what I'm talking about? It's time for you to spread your wings like a butterfly. You're saying, Joey, free. Free! When you push in promo code Joey at checkout. Just pay the small fin. $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code Joey to receive your first month for free. That's how I'm starting off on a beautiful Tuesday morning. So do me a favor. Visit BlueChew.com for more details. Don't forget to enter pro, promo code Joey. And we want to thank Blue Chew for always having our back and sponsoring the podcast and for helping us be better savages. <laughs>